Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, it's great. How about you? Good. No, it was good. It seems like it was a long time ago. It's already been quite a day, and it's just 9.30. It feels like it's about noon, but I guess it means I'm busy, which means it's good, right? Busy is good. Busy is good. So um, I'm not going to take a load of your time this morning. Um, I did go through and review um, this morning before the day got rolling um, the information on your account. Okay, and what is it that you, Michael, what is it that you guys do at M Sales Scripter? We provide a software app. Okay. Okay, cool. Just so I get an idea of, you know, makes a big difference, you know, what you do. Mm-hmm. Speak to, to kind of um, the profile of your account. So um, you came on with this in 2020. Um, was that when you started the business or were you in business for a long time before that? Uh, about 10 years. Okay. In your growth in your business, um, are you looking to stay yourself? Or are you looking to grow and add on? I, I mean, I think the goal is always to grow. Right. Okay, but you don't have any immediate need for um, adding anybody else additional, right? I, I'm not planning to add employees in the short term. Okay, very good. How was your business through 2020 and 2021? Were you decreased in revenue year over year? Were you um, growing in revenue those years? How did that look for you? Uh, that was our best year so far. Okay, cool. Do you have set up for your personal retirement outside of your company? Yes. Well, I have an IRA, an IRA with a okay. Financial okay. advisor, but um, okay. all right. And I'm going to cut the call off there because what we did after that is we started to get into the real details, and I don't want to put you to sleep. But we got the most important thing there, which are the questions that she asked, and the majority of the questions she asked we can label as current state questions. Current state questions are like if you sold cars. These would be questions to ask such as, do you have a car today? What type of car are you driving? What year is it? How many miles does it have? Do you own it? Do you lease it? What she asked me was, what is it that you guys do? If you have an appointment with a prospect, you should at a minimum spend three minutes going to that business's website and taking a quick look at what they do. If you're dealing with a very busy business owner, you don't want that person to then spend their valuable time educating you on what they do. Then she asks, when did you start the business? She probably could have gotten this from looking at our About Us page on our website. Are you looking to grow ad employees? I'm not sure what the answer of this would tell her in terms of whether I'm qualified for whatever she was trying to cross sell or upsell me on, but it sounds like probably a decent question to ask when you're selling payroll services how was revenue growth in 2020, 2021? Probably a decent question for her to ask because she was wanting to maybe think about any tax credits. Are you set up for retirement outside of your company? Probably a good question to ask. So decent current state questions, definitely a lot of room for improvement on those. And I will show you how she could improve those. So I'm gonna show you a process here that I used to think of good questions that she could ask. And you can copy this process for the product or service that you sell. I'm gonna go through it pretty quickly. So if you wanna use your own product or service for this, just press pause and try to go through it a little slower. But it starts with thinking about what is the product that I want to cross sell or upsell. Now keep in mind, if this is a check-in call with a current customer, we're not looking at the product here that they've already purchased. It's the additional products that we wanna add on to what we're already selling them. And for demo purposes, in this case, we're gonna focus on the 401k retirement services that she sells. The next step is to try to think about what is the type of prospect or customer that I'm going to be meeting with or speaking to in terms of the target. And in this case, we're gonna use small business owners once we have those two variables, we can combine those to say, well, when we sell that product and service to that type of customer, what are the improvements that we can help make for that person? And that's the value that we have to offer. 
And this step can be tricky. It can be tricky to think about how can we help the different people that we sell to or talk to. And here's a trick. Most business to business services can help in these seven areas. They can help to make something work better, make something easier, decrease time, increase revenue, decrease cost, decrease risk, improve visibility or access information. So we can look at the product and the features and think about, okay, for each of these going through them one at a time, do they help in any of these areas? And so, yes, we can help to improve a small business owner's retirement programs and benefits. We can minimize the amount of taxes they have to pay. And by offering better benefits, we can improve the recruiting and retainment of new employees. Now, this is pretty important stuff. It's when you start to outline this is when you start to identify and start to communicate what's in it for the prospect. And that will greatly help you to generate more leads and close more deals. The next step is to think about what pain points can we help make go away for the person that we're trying to cross sell or upsell. And you might be able to think about, okay, yeah, I help with this and I help with that, but here's a trick. If we came up with a good list of benefits and improvements that we deliver, for each of those, there's usually an opposite pain point. So one by one, we can look at each of those and say, well, what is the opposite of that? And so here are some pain points that I brainstormed based on those benefits. Now we start to get to the questions that we can ask. And here's a trick. If we brainstormed a good list of pain points that we helped to solve for each pain point is a question that could be asked. So I used these pain points to come up with three pain questions. Now I mentioned she primarily asked current state questions and there's probably a lot of room for improvement in the questions that she asked. And I can't tell you what current state questions you should ask for your particular product or service, but what I can do is outline some common areas that you should ask about. So here are some areas to think about asking questions about, and this might not be a complete list, but we can look at each of these areas and think of a question to ask. So certainly if you're selling something, you wanna find out if the prospect or customer is using something today in that particular area. So do you currently have a 401k? Who are you working with? What type of plan do you have? How many employees do you have? Are you in a contract? What benefits are you currently providing your employees? What is your employee turnover rate? When was the last time you considered other options in this area? So we accomplished our main goal with going through all those steps, which was to arrive at good questions to ask in our sales appointment. But there is one more step that will help us to close the deal at the end of the appointment. And that is to try to think about a customer example to share during that appointment. And here's a process that you could use to brainstorm an example for what you sell. You could start with thinking about the pain points you can help make go away, the product that you sell, and the value points that you help to deliver. And in each of those, if you think about a current customer, you can think about okay, well, I had a customer and they had this pain point and I sold this and that helped them to do this. And you can use that to create a really quick customer example to share at the end of your appointment. And that can help you to build a little bit of interest, maybe give you just enough interest to close the prospect at the end of your sales appointment. Now, each of those steps I went through actually create what we would refer to as building blocks and you can use those building blocks to figure out what to say during your sales appointment. Now I went through that really quickly and if you wanna go through that process step-by-step step and in more detail, we actually go through that process in our Smart Sales System training program and you can watch that training module. Go to our YouTube channel, then the playlist, the Smart Sales System, go to module three and that will drill into each of those steps and talk about each of those steps in more detail. But once you create your sales message using our approach, you will end up with having many different building blocks and you can mix and match those building blocks to create a cold call script. You could also use those same blocks to create a first appointment or customer check-in cross-sell script. And so I'm actually gonna show you what this appointment script looks like using those building blocks. But if we actually go to the opening of the call, if you think back to the call recording, there is what I would consider to be a little bit of an uncomfortable exchange where she was trying to be friendly and warm up the call instead of jumping right to business. I think that's great to warm up a call instead of just jumping right in. But you wanna keep in mind that most likely if you're selling to business owners or decision makers, they're extremely busy. So you don't wanna seem like a cheesy salesperson that's wasting their time. So yes, open the call with softer questions. And here are some great questions that I like to open my calls with. 
How's your day going so far? On every call that's virtual, I'll ask, where are you based? And usually when you ask the other person where they're based, not only does that help you to learn a little bit about them, but that opens up a lot of really good meeting opening questions because you could ask about the weather, you could ask about sports, you could ask about current events related to their particular area. And then depending on how much time you have with the prospect and if they don't seem like they're in too much of a rush, you could ask them about their role in the organization. How long have they been there? Where are they from? After you warm up the meeting and open the meeting, then I think the first types of questions to ask are current state questions. Typically on cold calls, I like to ask pain questions first. But on an appointment, I like to open with current state questions, especially if you're selling something that's somewhat commoditized, that most likely they are already doing something in that area. You want to find out what they're doing. So do you have a 401k program? Depending on how your current state questions go, then you could possibly transition to ask some pain questions. So you find out about what they're doing today, then try to find out if things are working okay or if there are any pain points that your product can help to resolve. And hopefully in asking your current state questions and possibly pain questions, you find out that there's an area for improvement that you can help to improve with your product or service. If you don't find that, you can get a little bit more direct by sharing the pain points that you can help to resolve and just tell the prospect what you usually help to fix and find out if they have those problems. And then as we roll towards the second half of the appointment, we can start to share with the prospect how we can help them. And this is where we would get into details around our 401k program, how it works, some of the ways that it helps and build interest in what we sell. And something really great to do, like I said, after you educate the prospect on what you sell, share a, an example of a customer that you sold that product or service to. And here's an example of using those points that we came up with earlier in a small customer example. Towards the end of the appointment, you may want to qualify the prospect to make sure they truly fit well with what you sell and truly need it. And so the end of the sales appointment is a good place to do that. And here are some examples of questions you could ask for that need versus want, funding availability, decision authority, level competition. And then after that, at the end of the appointment is when you want to try to close the prospect. And here are some closing questions that you could ask. And that's pretty much about it. Hopefully you got a tip or two out of that that you find helpful. And if you did and you want to return the favor, very easy for you to do. Simply like, comment, share this video, subscribe to our channel. Any of those help us and none of those cost you anything. If you like our tips, you may want to follow us on any of these social platforms. If you think this is helpful and you want more, everything I've talked to you about here today is part of the SMART sales system. SMART stands for Sales Messaging and Response Tactics. So as you can see, our process for improving what this salesperson did was to take a step back and go through a step-by-step -step process to arrive at the key things to talk about in the sales appointment. And that was our sales messaging process. And so that's the foundation of the smart sales system. It all starts with creating a really clear attention grabbing sales message. And once you have that as the foundation, it's really easy to then use that sales message to create your cold call script. You can use those building blocks to also create your sales appointment script, your email messages, voicemail script, objection responses. And then once you have all those documents, then you progress to level three of the smart sales system, which is the how to. So you have your appointment script. Well, then how are you going to go through those blocks and ask those questions and close the prospect at the end of your sales appointment? And that's all explained in level three. Now, the great news is that if you want to implement and learn the smart sales system, you can do that on YouTube for free. All you have to do is go to our channel and then the playlist, the smart sales system, and there's a model module that will take through every step of learning and implementing the smart sales system. Now we give away all that training on YouTube for free because all of it along with the product that we do sell, which is called Sales Scripter. Sales Scripter aligns with all of this. For example, the foundation is creating your sales message. There's an area of Sales Scripter called the Sales Message Builder, and it will take you through that process step by step to create your sales message. Once you have your sales message in Sales Scripter, the software aligns with level two because there's an area called the Sales Playbook, which is a library of scripts and emails and voicemails and whatnot that fill in with your sales message. For example, here we're talking about sales appointments and using those building blocks to create 
a script and structure for your sales appointments, there's actually a document in the sales playbook called the first appointment script that is actually the same as what I talked to you about here today. And that would fill in with all of your building blocks from the sales message builder. And certainly the software aligns with level three, providing full CRM, email automation, capabilities as well. And then an upgrade from there is certainly I'm available to provide consulting hours to help with any of those levels and areas. I help clients to create their sales message. I help them to create their scripts and email messages and more. If that's interesting, you still don't know what to do, you may want to check out my book, The Smart Sales System, Sell Smarter, Not Harder, and you can get that on Amazon here. I'll put a link in the description. That's pretty much it. If you want more information, the best place to go is salescriptor.com. If you want more tips, there are plenty of videos. There are eBooks you can download for free. If you have questions on the product of Sales Scripter, that's the best place to go. There are tons of demo videos that will show you exactly how it works. And if you want to contact us, that's the best place to go as well. You can get our email address, phone number. There's a chat window as well. Thanks for being here and hope this was helpful. And we'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.